Jackson section 1.8 is started with the green theorem and derive an equation for the electrostatic potential for the boundary value problem. So the starting point is the green theorem of the form. So you have a volume integral, you have two function, phi and Laplacian psi minus psi, Laplacian phi, and a volume integral that equals to a surface integral of uh, phi partial psi partial n minus psi partial phi partial n and area integral. So the geometry is uh, you have uh, some kind of a volume of uh, V, the volume V, and then the, this volume has a surface S. So the, you can define a normal vector on the surface N, called N, okay? So that's the identity of Green's theorem. So for the electrostatic problem, basically uh, you choose phi, this little phi as your capital phi, the electrostatic potential that satisfy the Poisson equation, Laplacian phi, capital phi equals to minus charge density rho divided by epsilon zero. Okay, then you choose um, psi is um, one over x minus x pi, where you define it as one over capital R. Okay, so uh, if you accept the result of the green function, say if you have Laplace and one over x minus x pi, or equivalently, you can take the Laplace and pi with respect to the pi coordinate, which is the same. That equals the minus four pi delta x minus x pi. Okay, if you can accept this one, then uh, it's quite easy to, to get to the next equation. So this equation is 1.35 in Jackson. And you can divide 1.36 quite easily by substituting the Poisson equation in here and then this relation into here. And that means, uh, so, so you substitute this into here, you have a delta function and we consider the case for x inside, for x outside, of course, the integral is zero for, for x inside the volume. Then the first term will integrate uh, by substituting x, x pi equals x, and we change the integration label to pi, and then this little phi become capital phi, so the first term will be capital phi, x and multiply by negative four pi. Okay, and the second term is just simply one over epsilon zero. Uh, this charge density divided by r, the volume integral over v. Okay, and then the that equals to the right hand side surface integral capital phi. Uh, this is partial partial n, change the to pi, and this is one over r, and the minus one over r partial phi partial n pi dA pi. Okay, so. That would be the result. This is here. 1.36. Okay. And now, of course, uh, this is simple, but uh, if you if you do not accept uh, this equation, because this equation, 
when x equals x pi is singular, when you do the volume integration, if x is inside, then you will, there will be a singularity. This one of our function and take the derivative of a singular function at that at the singularity might be problematic. If you don't accept that, actually this equation allows you to derive the same result using just some argument, which is more rigorous than, uh, I mean, using a delta function. Of course, the, the end result will be the same. So the idea is that if x is inside, if x is inside the volume v, then we are we can take out a sphere, take out a sphere, center at x with a radius delta. Okay, we can do that. And now uh, x will be outside. So the new volume, the new volume, v pi will be v minus the sphere, the volume of the sphere. And then uh, the new area s pi will be the old area s plus the area of the sphere. So well, let's call it s double pi plus s double pi, okay? And later on, of course, I will, will let uh, this weight is delta goes to zero, okay? Now we apply this new volume, a new surface on this, the Green's theorem, okay? Now, and using the same substitution, phi is still electrostatic potential, psi is still, still this one of our function, but now after we ex exclude x from the volume, take out this sphere. Now the, uh, the integram, this one of r is totally regular. And the Laplacian of this one of r inside this volume would be exactly zero. So the first term would be zero. Okay. So what you have is uh, just the second term. The second term will give you one of epsilon zero and integrating over this v prime volume rho surface integral uh, that equals to the surface in integration. Now the surface integration has two parts. One is this, the original s, the other is this s double pi. Okay, so let's just write out the uh, s part, which is exactly the same. Uh, just got to the same, we did that before, so. This area integral. Now, the, another part is this S double pi, uh, integration over this volume, over this, this area integral, this area, okay? So you need to plus the, and you need to be a little careful that now because you're taking out, this is outside of the volume. So the n prime for this, uh, on this S double prime surface is pointing towards the center. Okay, so, so this uh, plus this area S, area integral over S double prime and you have phi, First term is phi. Now this d, the n pi, because of this opposite direction is becomes minus, uh, minus partial, partial r of one of r. Okay. And likewise, this, this one uh, is just the same. The second term is uh, also changed to ddr of phi and da pi. All right. Now we'll let, uh, let delta goes to zero. Okay. So, so we'll consider delta goes to zero. Okay. 
when delta goes to zero, uh, this volume integration, this term actually um, is just like integrating over over V or do you, you are subtracting something, excluding this this part, but the, the contribution from this little volume actually is small because uh, as delta goes to actually the contribution is zero in this limit because uh, assuming rho, of course, uh, assuming rho is a distribution, a smooth function, then the volume is proportional to, for this one is proportional to delta cube, and this is, uh, the R is proportional to delta, so the whole contribution is, will, goes to zero, so the first term is uh, just the same as integrating over V, And the second term, or the, the term on the right hand side is uh, the first term is just the same. Now the second term, you have, you have two terms in this integration over S double pi. Now you, when you consider the second term, you, you, if you assume this potential phi is more it's a regular function. It, it's not singular around this point, uh, over this volume, and, and as this volume string to zero, this derivative actually doesn't change, uh, the phi doesn't change that much. So that part goes to zero, and the integration, this part doesn't contribute, okay? So only this part contribute, and this partial, partial r of one over r give you minus one over r square, and you're integrating over a surface area uh, with the surface area four pi r square, uh, actually four pi delta square because now r equals the delta on the surface, okay? And phi doesn't change much, so phi is exactly the same as phi at, uh, at x. So this part will be just minus four pi Phi at x. Okay, so that is coming from this surface integral, taking limit of delta goes to zero. Okay, so this one is exactly this 1.36. So, uh, this one, uh, did, did I get the sign right? Oh, I, uh, there's, a, there's a minus sign. So minus, and you take the minus sign, minus, minus, wow, so this is one of positive. You already have a minus sign because N is pointing inside, and then you take the one of R, you get another minus sign, so four pi phi X. So this equation is the same as this equation. Okay, so this is also 1.36. Okay, so we arrive at the same equation using this process of taking out the value around x when x is inside the volume. And then uh, we don't need to uh, use the delta function uh, in our derivation. Okay, so that might uh, be more satisfactory for some people, but this derivation actually has uh, another uh, advantage, uh, especially consider a very special problem if X is right on the surface, not inside, not outside, right on the surface, okay? If you use the original delta function formulation, then uh, you put this into this, the first term, you have a delta function here, but then when you involve, uh, do the volume integration, the delta function actually is zero. The argument of delta, fun delta function is zero on the surface. So now this becomes a, a little unclear how much you get uh, from the delta function because it's right on the boundary. So this is a very common problem when you have a in the integral involving a delta function if the limit of the integral actually at 
the right at the point where the delta function argument of delta function is zero, then uh, but whether you get uh, full uh, full value or it, just like where the the argument inside the, it in the limit, or you get half of that. So that is a little uh, unclear. So, but uh, if you use this the consideration, so like if you, now if X is right here, now you you take the limiting process, now the sphere is something like that. So this radius is delta, right a little bit of delta, okay. So you're taking out this volume, this sphere, but now the center is on the boundary, okay. So everything in this process is the same except this term. Now this term, the area, surface area is instead of four pi delta squared the area. Now you have uh, just uh, two pi delta squared. So you, you get uh, um, two pi instead of four pi. And one more thing I need to indi indicate, this is S because that's kind of important. Now, uh, because uh, in, in the original one, this, this S double pi uh, doesn't intersect with this original S. So you have this original S here. But now if the X is going on the boundary, now the spear actually cut out part of the original surface. So this one is gone, okay? So, so in order to, uh, if you consider this surface, then this surface integral, you need to be a little careful. So we need to write it out. So let's write in the formula as the original one. So this, this one go back to here, you can only have negative two pi instead of negative four pi, phi x. Now press one over epsilon zero. We and this volume, although you are still taking out this sphere, but the delta as the radius goes to zero. This is you can still use the original V, okay. And but the right hand side S is a little bit a little careful. This it says not S, not just S. Okay, is this is okay? Because now we are taking out part of this, so and um, you can indicate that using a language like uh, taking a principal part or principal value. Okay, now you this surface integral. The integram actually is singular, at least the form of the, the, the integram is singular on the surface. So this principal part or principal value means uh, on this surface integral, on this surface integral, you are taking out a circle, circular area around this point. And this has to be a circle of equal radius. So it has to be a radius delta, radius delta on the surface, take out a, a circle around this point, and that is indicated by this principal value notation. If you do that, then uh, phi have a minus two pi on this side instead of minus four pi. Okay, so this would be for the special case x, this is for x on s. Okay, so that, uh, need to be a little careful, but uh, this process allow you to get to this result. But uh, using the original delta function, you will be uh, difficult to argue that uh, you get to this result, especially the surface term in the original delta function. You don't actually know how to treat the uh, this surface term. Okay, so uh, that is uh, another way to derive the same equation.